in this lecture and a subsequent few we are going to go through some of the basics on the networking aspects of internet of things so the first thing that we need to understand is that iot has evolved a lot so starting from basic research basic fundamental research and innovation there has been different other types of innovation which are breakthrough uh, which are disruptive and some of the other innovations which are sustaining in nature so in terms of basic research there has been lot of research on uh, the nanotechnology the use of nanotechnology the use of quantum teletransport uh, teleportation quantum teleportation basically means that how uh, the different information at the atomic level is sent from one point to another is transported from one point to another at the atomic level and nanotechnology uh, it involves things like nano iot nano nodes nano networking nodes uh, nano sensor nodes and uh, nano networks that means at the nano scale forming a network which can be for different purposes nano networks are used for different purposes uh, in the human inside the human body at the molecular level nano networks can be used so like this at the nano scale and uh, for quantum uh, uh, communication there has been lot of advancements uh, that has been done uh, for uh, involving uh, basic innovations basic research innovations so this is one likewise uh, for uh, semantic interoperability there has been lot of research on semantic uh, interoperability for example let us say that a temperature sensor it might be giving the data as temp another temperature sensor as temperature another temperature sensor a third one as t so there has to be interoperability between all these different notions but they are all referring to the same temperature right so this is basically taken care of by things like se semantic interoperability there has been lot of research on this one this particular aspect then energy harvesting again there has been lot of research um, you know energy harvesting through different renewable uh, sources uh, such as wind energy solar etc etc how these can harvest you know so how these different uh, renewable sources uh, from these how energy can be harvested to power the different nodes in iot these are very small powered you know small sized nodes with very uh, limited power so energy harvesting is very crucial it plays a very crucial role in the sustenance of these networks so uh, there has been lot of work on this one also and this has been like you know these aspects for example there has been lot of breakthrough innovation on these uh, then disruptive innovation uh, for example virtual reality augmented reality you know so these are all like uh, you know involvement of these and incorporation into the iot network uh, there has been lot of uh, research uh, on on this particular front and uh, things like cloud uh, big data these are like sustaining technologies for iot again there has been lot of work on uh, these technologies uh, as well now when we talk about iot if we think about iot what we have we have these different things uh, uh, which as i said in one of the previous lectures is these things are fitted uh, uh, these are basically physical objects once again so these physical objects are fitted with different sensors and these sensors basically uh, sense different physical phenomena that are occurring around them so these sensor fitted things sensors actuators and different other embedded devices um, this, these are one component of the iot so but these become the different nodes in the network these are the individual nodes in the network so then what we have is these nodes they have to communicate with one another and the information that is sensed by one of these sensors fitted to these nodes this information from this sensor and the other sensors these are taken and are sent to the other sensor nodes the destination nodes so how is that done first this information have to 
flow through the local network and then if the destination intended destination is outside this local network then it is sent through the internet typically if it is if we are talking about an iot which is basically internet uh, based iot then basically it is going to flow through the internet or some other wide area network and finally it is going to arrive at the intended destination node and from there maybe there can be some uh, there can be some uh, at that point actually there can be some analytic engine which is running on some back end server uh, those could be there and from that point from the decision from these analytics that are run on these servers uh, decisions about actuation could be made. So, what we see is from sensors to actuators through the local area network the internet involving uh, you know black back end services analytics uh, uh, which includes again some you know high end processing at different servers uh, and uh, different complex complex algorithms execution of different co complex algorithms uh, which are based on maybe machine learning uh, neural networks and so on and so forth these are all required so so basically you know what happens is we basically can conceive uh, of an iot as a very complex system involving sensors actuators uh, networks, local area, wide area, internet and uh, 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 different servers, different algorithms, machine learning and so on all executing uh, together to make the system function as, as one single entity. So, going back we have uh, in this local network as I was saying then we have the internet, we have the back end uh, services and finally, the applications that are being served. So, these are the different basic components of IOT. So, this is the scenario that I was referring to earlier. So, what we have? We have these different things, we have these different things, these things could be uh, like you know different uh, physical objects which are fitted with different sensors, these things could be telephones. Uh, lighting systems uh, could be cameras, could be different other scalar sensors like uh, the temperature sensor and so on. And these things are able to communicate with one another with the help of wireless technologies like Zigbee, Bluetooth, Wi Fi, and so on. So, as you can see, that this wireless basically helps these different devices to talk to one another and this information from these devices they will flow through a local network and from a local network they will go through the internet to uh, uh, to the you know these data are basically sent to the back end services involving different servers processors and so on and so forth for running different analytics and then based on that different devices can be actuated uh, uh, you know uh, maybe a pump uh, this is an example that i gave earlier in a previous lecture basically for agricultural purposes the use of IOT a pump might be started might be actuated based on the data that is received from the sensor nodes and based on the analytics that are run at the different servers uh, uh, in uh, uh, that are involved in the back end service processing. So, in terms of the functional components of IOT, so one of the very important things is basically interaction. Interaction not only with the physical environment by these different sensors, but also interaction and communication with the different devices uh, 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 that means, the different nodes in the IOT in the IOT network. Then comes the processing. So, processing and analysis of the different functioning and the operations that are taking place. So, processing of that uh, data the processing of those operations. Uh, so, this is another component. Uh, the third functional component is basically the interaction, interaction typically with the internet uh, and because you know at present most of the times the most of the IOT implementations are still using the internet. So, it is all you know internet powered IOT implementations. So, uh, internet interaction is a, uh, is one of the very important uh, uh, components of uh, building IOT. Then we have the web services 
web services, machine to machine communication and so on. So, basically to what is going to happen earlier most of the, so when we talk about a web technology typically we are talking about human to machine communication. In a web service we are talking about uh, you know uh, some machine uh, uh, sending uh, or some, uh, some uh, equipment basically sensing and sending that data to another machine for further processing. So, machine to machine communication is involved and offering different services. So, one machine offers some services to another machine and so on. So, so like this uh, and uh, this is basically you know this sort of thing in a IOT scenario is taken care of uh, uh, typically and then we have uh, the integration of different application services and the user interface to access the IOT that is another component. So, there has to be a user interface a human interface to accessing the IOT network or the IOT uh, you know mega network. So, looking at this particular figure I would like to try to clarify how the IOT implementation is typically done and it can be done to achieve different application needs. So, this is a figure which shows that we have different sensors, processors and radio that are fitted to each of these devices or the sensor nodes or the sensor modes or the IOT nodes as you may want to call them. So, these nodes they talk to one another, but these different sensor nodes, these different sensor nodes they are basically within the jurisdiction or the domain of the gateway. So, the gateway is basically tasked to assign different local locally unique addresses to these different nodes to these different IOT nodes and the gateway basically takes care of the local addressing within that particular local area network. So, from th that point on the data can flow through a proxy server if internet access is required. So, it will go through the internet then a web socket and from the web socket it goes to a cloud server that means, this is where lot of analytics and back end processing takes place and based on that the actuation based on the analytics and the inferences that are drawn from the sensed data actuation of different devices can take place. For example, lighting a particular lamp could be the actuation of the particular lamp. We have different interdependencies that are involved in the implementation of IOT. So, we have if we look at IOT from another perspective what we have? We have sensors, we have actuators and a bunch of other things that are there in between as shown in this particular figure. So, this is basically the entire span of these different embedded devices. So, the sensors basically sense the data and that data is basically serving the application requirements and then we have an operating system and a power management unit which basically you know does things like duty cycling of the sensors, the how much the sensors you know how much time they are going to be active for how much time they are going to be in the sleep state, how to power them, how to power them because these are very small sized you know very resource starved sensors. So, uh, and the, the basically the power unit in these sensor nodes these are very small uh, in size. So, basically consequently what happens is these embedded devices they themselves are very resource starved. So, we have uh, a power management unit which basically takes care of power management as a whole, how much power is required for how long it is going to power then what are the ways to harvest energy if at all it can be harvested and uh, how much power consumption is going to take place at different points of time can it be can it be optimized at different points of uh, operation um, and so on and so forth. And as you can see over here thereafter we have these different radios involving Bluetooth, Zigbee, 6 loop and Wi Fi Ethernet and uh, uh, low range uh, basically Wi Fi. Uh, so, these are the different you know radios that can help uh, in communicating that data uh, that is sensed uh, uh, onward to other nodes. 
these, these basically these different radio technologies can help in the com for the communication purpose. So, alongside we also have things like virtual machines which takes care of the virtualization of the nodes, we have the web, uh, we have uh, you know different things like HTTP client, MQTT client, COP client. So, these are the ones MQTT, COP we are going to talk next in the uh, subsequent lectures. So, uh, that will make our understanding clearer. So, but these are like you know different application level uh, protocols that are used for functioning of these different IoT devices. And finally, comes the actuator particles. So, we have the sensors, we have different applications, so operating system, power management, radios, virtual machines, web and then we have these actuators all together which forms the embedded systems, the embedded devices. Now, let us now look at the service orientation, the service oriented architecture of uh, uh, IOT. So, in the IOT sphere what we have are these different layers, the sensing layer, the network layer, the surface layer and the interface layer. So, we have four different layers and as the name suggests sensing layer basically takes care of sensing through different RFID tags, sensors and so on and so forth and then the data are sensed are acquired and so on are sent to the next layer higher up which is the network layer. The network layer basically uh, serves sensor network, social networks, you know different other networks and databases, internet and so on that is the network layer. Then what we have? We have the service layer which deals mo mostly with the service delivery uh, such as uh, service uh, division, service integration, uh, service uh, uh, you know service repository, uh, service uh, logic, uh, business logic and so on. So, all these different things that are involved with the offering of the services to support the business functions. Then we have the interface layer, we have application front end, we have uh, a contract interface and application APIs. So, so these are, this becomes the interface layer and then we have the security issues which basically span all these different uh, layer verticals uh, sorry layer horizontals. So, in terms of uh, uh, the categorization of IOT it can be categorized into two one is the consumer IOT which is what typically most of the people tend to use and these are uh, here basically these different devices they communicate uh, with one another. Uh, 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 through these local networks and it can be you know find a find a further communication can also take place over the internet as well. So, depending on the requirements either local or through the internet. Then we have the local communication which is typically done via Bluetooth, Zigbee or Wi-Fi and uh, uh, so basically this local communication is constrained within the bounds of or within the domain of the IoT gateway. So, uh, this is consumer IoT. Then uh, we have the industrial IoT which is basically uh, uh, quite similar to the consumer IoT, but uh, the application uh, uh, the application interest is in the industrial sector. So, we are talking about manufacturing industries with different machines which these machines are fitted with different IoT devices they together become the IoT devices they have different sensors and so on which are there which can the node as a whole can communicate with other machines and so on. So, this becomes the industrial IoT and uh, where basically there are different communication that takes place between the different nodes as well as different industry specific technologies. Now, we talk about IoT gateways. Uh, so, this is what I told you that uh, in a local network you have these locally unique addresses. Uh, and that are uh, there uh, within that uh, local area network IoT network and so, uh, so these local addresses basically they take care of uh, uh, the addressing of the, uh, the different nodes. Now, so what are these gateways doing? So, the gateways basically take care of the addressing, but then uh, you know this is what the gateway structure looks like. So, this is uh, what uh, is there. So, we have the local network on one side of the gateway, we have the global network on the other side of the gateway and this is where the 
the gateway this is how the gateway looks like. So, the gateway has uh, and functions different tasks such as switching, uh, routing, protocol conversion, firewall and VPN services, security as a whole and processing. So, this is what a gateway does and the gateway with the local network and the global network communicate via the wired or wireless channels uh, and so on. So, this is how the IoT gateways function. Different associated technologies of IoT uh, involving big data, cloud, smart grid, internet of vehicles uh, that means, you know different vehicles on the road uh, uh, are fitted with different IoT devices which can communicate with one another and different intelligence about the road traffic conditions about uh, offering different uh, roadside services uh, uh, can be made possible with the help of internet of vehicles. Then we have the machine to machine communication where one machine talks to another without any human intervention. We have telemedicine uh, offering uh, you know offering healthcare services to the remote hospitals, remote healthcare centers and so on. Uh, CPS cyber physical systems we have 3G, 4G, 5G, we have uh, SDN. Uh, and so on. So, these are the different associated technologies which together uh, make uh, uh, IoT, which together are used to uh, deliver IoT solutions. Now, you know if we try to make a side by side comparison between uh, the IoT stack and web stack, we will see that more or less the application layers remain the same for both IoT as well as the as, as well as the web. So, conceptually these application layers, these different layers communication layers not application layers, but communication layers remain the same between IoT and web, but what is different is that we have a new set of protocols that are used over here. So, we new set of protocols and additionally in IoT unlike in the case of web things such as different types of management, management of the network, management of the power, management of different other resources, these are all additionally taken care of in the IoT node, uh, in the IoT stack, uh, which is not available in the case of the web. And this is very much required because you know, so in the case of IoT, we are talking about heavily resource constrained nodes, and these heavily resource constrained nodes basically require management network management in terms of energy, in terms of processing, in terms of data and so on and so forth. So, there are different key technologies that basically help IoT survive. We have the future internet knowledge aggregation uh, obtained through data assimilation, data, data collection, processing and uh, analysis. Then we have the different standards, we have the sensor networks, we have the communication, we have cloud computing, we have discovery services, nano electronics, embedded systems, software system integration and last but not the least what is written over here on top is the security and privacy issues. So, security and privacy issues are paramount in IoT because there are heavy concerns uh, because you know we are dealing with resource constraint nodes with communication constraints, bandwidth constraints, processing constraints, energy constraints and so on. So, these nodes become very much vulnerable, vulnerable to different types of attacks, different types of security breaches and also because IoT systems are very much data intensive, there is lot of information that flows on through the network as a consequence of which the privacy of the individuals of the organizations might be at stake. So, security and privacy and trust also which is not mentioned over here, these are very much important uh, to power IoT technologies. There are different types of challenges, security, scalability, energy efficiency, bandwidth management, interfacing, interoperability. So, when we are talking about interfacing, it is typically we are referring to device interfacing. So, different you know one device uh, talking to another device may be these devices do not belong to the same vendor, they are not running the same stack, they are not following the same standard and so on. So, then comes 
Consequently, then comes the interoperability issue, how to make these devices talk to one another, how the different protocols, the different devices, the different algorithms, they are going to handshake with one another. So, like this, this is another challenge which is typical of IoT uh, implementations. Then we have data storage and analytics and complexity management with tools such as SDN. So, SDN basically helps in um, addressing the, common, uh, the complexity of uh, systems by decoupling uh, the control plane from the data plane of the networks. Different considerations are there for building IoT. One is that we need to have a straight network architecture which can be used by different IoT implementations. So, there has to be a governing network architecture. Number two, hardware requirements and cost are important. Uh, you know, so what type of communication hardware are going to be used uh, and different devices and the costs that are involved. And due to the presence of numerous applications of IoT enabled devices, a single networking platform may not be sufficient to address all the needs of the consumer or the IoT device. So, this is another the third consideration that has to be taken into uh, account while building IoT systems. Then we have the complexity of the networks, uh, you know, if the number of nodes in the network increases, then whether the, in the solution, whether the system is going to be, uh, you know, sustainable, whether it can be scaled up or not. Uh, then we have the interface among, uh, interference among the different devices, this is very much vital. In, uh, in any network, interference is uh, a crucial issue and particularly IoT networks involve lot of large number of typically densely deployed nodes and these nodes because they are you know typically wireless powered uh, by Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or Zigbee and so on. So, interference between these different uh, uh, communication between these different nodes the red their corresponding radios and so on is possible. So, how do you handle it? Network management as a whole as I was telling earlier involving uh, you know energy management, involving computation management, involving communication management, involving service management and infrastructure management and so on. So, network management as a whole. Then heterogeneity in the networks, heterogeneity in terms of the devices, the standards, the protocols, the algorithms and so on. So, how do you handle because IoT devices unlike traditional internet, IoT networks come in different uh, you know come from different vendors, different devices coming from different vendors, different devices using different algorithms, these different protocols being used and so on. So, so all these uh, basically invite uh, dealing with the issue of heterogeneity, lot of heterogeneity is involved. So, how heterogeneity is taken care of and protocol organization and standardization. So, uh, within the network. So, how the different protocols can be standardized. Uh, so, that a device running one protocol can talk to another device and so on. Uh, different wireless networks are used issues such as traffic management, load management, uh, then uh, variations in the different wireless network forms. For example, wireless personal area network W PAN versus wireless body area network interoperability I have already mentioned just a while back, then network management and overlay network. So, uh, so basically you know the overlay network takes care of some kind of a virtualization of the physical devices on to, uh, you know so or and, and on top of these physical virtual devices and the networks and overlay is created. So, this is basically the overlay network. Scalability in involving flexibility within the internet, uh, then integration of different IoT devices that are may be manufactured using different standards may be in the using different uh, you know vendor specific. Uh, protocols. Uh, so, IoT integration uh, is uh, a very complex issue uh, which basically dictates the scalability of the system, large scale deployment issues and real time connectivity of billions and trillions of devices. With this we come to an end of uh, this lecture on, uh, on the basics of IoT networking, um, uh, but this is just the first part we are going to cover. Uh, many other uh, issues involving uh, the networking aspects of IoT in the subsequent lectures and from uh, there uh, we can understand from these subsequent lectures we can understand how forming an IoT is 
very complex what are the different protocols the individual protocols that are out there there may not be a single isolated uh, or a single uh, threaded let us say um, uh, one protocol uh, for iot as a whole but there are all these individual protocols that are there so how that can be taken care of and what how can architecture be synced up between these different iot devices manufactured by different vendors so these like this actually there are different complexities that are involved so we are going to talk about that in the subsequent lectures thank you